Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Tom Whitcomb, and I want to thank you all for uh, joining us today for the webinar that is hosted by WirePass and Dim on Off. Uh, we're going to go over a few slides and uh, present everything, uh, present the Dim on Off and WirePass platform to you. Uh, on the call is going to be uh, Ben Corrado. He's the head of US uh, for WirePass. Bernard Tattoo, the president and CEO of Dim on Off. Eric Dusablon, operations VP at Dim on Off, and myself, uh, Director of Sales and Technology with Trinity Technology Services. So I'd like to turn it over to Ben uh, and start the webinar. Awesome, thanks, Tom. Uh, as Tom said, I'm the head of the U.S. here at WirePass, and um, you know, at WirePass, we're really focused on helping build out connectivity. So our goal is to provide the most reliable, optimized, and scalable solution to create connectivity for massive IoT, and um, we deliver all that mesh software as a stack uh, that can be integrated into IoT devices on multiple different types of hardware. And um, those, those become that access point for all data to flow through that mesh and uh, automatically form those. We're focused on how do we build really large scale. And um, so we've, we've optimized from the very beginning our networks to be focused on that. So that means you can roll out, you know, a couple hundred devices to get going and scale your solution up into the millions over time uh, as you roll out your smart city applications. And not only does that mean the, the ability to physically scale large, but it's also about having that low cost of ownership while having that large scale and making sure that that um, scaling process doesn't cost a fortune when you're doing it. And finally, we focus on ecosystems at WirePass and, and how do we build uh, solutions with lots of different partners that easily integrate together and that as you're building your end solutions, you can pull from a variety of different vendors that, uh, that all work together in, in one large ecosystem. Um, so whether that's hardware, software, cloud, you know, management, we have all those solutions. So with that, we believe we've built the, the best wireless connectivity for massive IoT. And that stack is running on that IoT device. It has those scalable and market proven um, solutions to perform a multi-hop large scale wireless mesh network. And the important part about that is it's automatically configured on site you know, without any user intervention. Um, all the network intelligence is built into the device and it makes those decisions autonomously and, uh, and scales without you needing to know anything about how that network works. So this enables lots of, uh, of different things to happen from one central network. So, so you can do data collection from sensors and uh, route that all the way up to the cloud. You can do controls down to those end devices. Um, you can remotely update those devices. You can locate them with an XYZ position. All of this is native to the stack and, and makes it very simple to deploy. And so we have solutions out in the, out in the field today where we have you know, over 700,000 devices all in one wireless mesh network running WirePass uh, covering an entire city. And um, we believe that's the largest mesh networked uh, types of solutions out there today and you know that that 700,000 devices is in in the city of Oslo in Norway for instance so so lots of different scale and capability is, is what we're focused on there as we look at the architecture for WirePass um, it, it's pretty simple we we run a mesh network stack on top of uh, device hardware and we can use a variety of different off-the-shelf uh, hardware chipsets and then there's applications that you can run on top of that stack um, so there's a full SDK and, and you can build out all of these different great applications those devices get deployed out into the field automatically form that mesh network um, that network uh, with the same credentials connects to any number of gateways and passes all that data up to cloud or on-premise tools where you can do positioning, monitoring, and controls um, all through standard cloud applications. We've got lots of different hardware examples and customer examples through this, Diminoff being a, a great example of that and one who's uh, really taken advantage of our ecosystem and, and building out these solutions. 
So with that little bit of an overview of what we're doing at Wirepass, I'd love to turn it over to Eric over uh, at the Dimonov side and have him tell you a bit about how they're actually putting these to use in, uh, in city applications. Thank you, Ben. Uh, so um, the questions we have at Dimonov is, uh, what is needed to create a safe and sustainable and enjoyable city for citizens? So our answer is leadership is tools to process and maintain and increase the quality of life of every single person and the technology to support this vision. So uh, in two, 2007, uh, Demonop was started and it's been uh, from start a, a, a wireless lighting solution and it did uh, evolve over the time and in 2017, you can see on left that uh, we add our front end, which is a CMS for smart city management system. And we had one vertical, which was uh, the uh, lighting and also uh, the uh, our sensors and gateway and controllers that were uh, already present at that time. But now in 2020, uh, it's an all-in-one uh, smart city platform with uh, several uh, verticals and also with the uh, different um, front end for the same uh, for, for the different solutions. So it became something that is open because we can add sensors from third party. We can uh, we added some API from other companies. Uh, you can move on. So uh, in the center we have our current version of SCMS, which is the front end version 20. It is uh, you will see in a later presentation what it looks like and around this uh, go to the next slide you have the different verticals where we have lighting security and enver environment and mobility that are now integrated into the platform with the, in the same fashion with third party apis you're using the same protocols uh, with added uh, connectivity to cellular and wireless to the gateway and we are supporting several protocols uh, including WirePass uh, around uh, the, the, the ecosystem of different controllers or nodes supported as an IoT device. So once in the city, the, uh, uh, the lighting is really the infrastructure that creates the, uh, the network between uh, all nodes and deploy over all the city and uh, it is connected to the backend with the gateway. Next slide. Then uh, we add the, the environmental portion with uh, uh, smart management, smart word management, sewer, uh, 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 river level, and also um, uh, snow sensors. And then we add parking to that where we have curbside detection and also internal parking detection. And then security comes to uh, to the to to, this, to there uh, with cameras, with uh, audio detection device for detecting car crash and gunshot. Uh, we also have uh, other type of devices that can be added to the ecosystem that are not mentioned there. Can move to next slide. I'll leave. Uh, uh, Tom will uh, discuss about this particular vertical there, which is lighting. I let you go, Tom. Thanks, Eric. As Eric said, um, this system rides on top of uh, one of the easiest uh, energy improvement and security improvements a city, municipality, or utility could do, and that's uh, LED lighting improvements. Um, it, it's an LED lighting project, you, you know, for roadway or decorative pieces. You know, it's 30 35 percent of a total utility bill uh, and right out of the gate you can reduce that by 60 percent by putting a better light source uh, not only are you saving on energy consumption you're also putting a, a higher quality of light with a longer burn uh, burn rate and the roi on those projects usually comes really quick so the beauty of this design is you can actually improve that even further by putting um, a smart city uh, management software up there like dim on off you can further uh, dim the fixtures uh, so that it's adequate light, uh, lower energy consumption. You get on schedules, the schedules work a little bit better. Your ability to manage uh, maintenance uh, goes up 
uh, because when there's an alert, which we'll go through here in the next couple slides, uh, those alerts go automatic to folks that need to have them. Uh, so you have an accurate record, uh, recording and data log of when you have fixed your failures uh, and or uh, poles getting knocked over. So what you see in front of you is basically the makeup of the dim on off um, SCMS platform. You will have a dashboard on the left, uh, you'll have a gateway, and then those two devices you see are RTM and RME modules. Uh, the RME basically sits into a seven pin twist lock that's on the top of a fixture and or a pole. Uh, and then the RTM is usually used for a fixture that has limitations inside for space and uh, decorative pieces. Um, and what those will allow you to do is that's basically how you create your wireless mesh network. Uh, the gateway sends and receives a signal from uh, the SCMS dashboard. Uh, those can be wired in a couple ways. They can have a, uh, a cell, uh, cell card, a SIM card in there to utilize a, uh, a cell service. Uh, and if the, infrastructure, if the city has the infrastructure for hardwired like fiber or ethernet, uh, it can be wired directly into that box. And then once it's wired and signal is transmitting and receiving to and from the gateway, from the gateway, it goes to the nodes uh, in a radio frequency. Now that's a, that's a key component because radio frequencies are generally free. So this keeps operating costs way down. If you're dealing with a system that is entirely cell-based, um, operating costs for this particular uh, system uh, is gonna be much more competitive because the cost is gonna be a fraction it's pennies on the dollars um, when you have a hybrid of uh, a cell or best case is landline with radio frequencies. So this, this is a lot of talk, a lot of conjecture, but the reality of it is, is you'll see that there's um, clients of ours that have uh, reached out and said, you know, here's what we think. You know, this is, this is how it improved us. Um, in um, Aurelia, Ontario, you can see that the, uh, they were able to, to measure um, the energy usage. And, and you, could, you can do this in a way where it's as accurate as billing grade. So the, the, to, to manage your, your assets, you can see exactly what's going on if there's ever a question for how much uh, energy was used. Uh, if you have a question with fixtures, this particular city was able to use that to take that data to say this is what we consumed in a year, and this is what uh, we used in how we kept greenhouse gases lower. Um, and then if you go through a couple of those, you'll see some of the benefits that these folks have seen, um, able to reduce the overall cost through the lifetime of the fixture, and then monitor that data so they have a hard record of it. Um, and then the last one uh, that said that um, it, it allows teams to, to think of ideas and how IoT will improve the operation of the city and the management of it. And again, these are real-time uh, pieces that come from our clients that say, after we've installed this and we've had time to work with it, this is what we've seen. There's another piece that I will touch back on when I come back, uh, when we start talking about projects. Um, but this is a good segue to hand it back over to Eric. Okay, so we're here about to talk about mesh and wire pass. So uh, especially uh, what are the advantages of having a mesh technology compared to a cellular or uh, other type of uh, uh, carrier-based technology is the possibility to get over obstacles because uh, the each time you add a node, it creates a new path to get uh, a new way to each node. It, it, each time you add a node, you also increase the quality of the connection or you create new connection with the different nodes, allowing quality to be increased. Each time you add a new node uh, at the end of the network, you are also increasing the distance. So you are getting a larger infrastructure with a larger network. And you can save on the number of router because when you position the router, you don't have to find the right place in the middle of the different nodes to be able to reach the last end of each node and also place the the, the, the cellular router at a good place uh, at the same time. So you have less uh, constraints when you're positioning your router and it's naturally extending the network each time you, you add a new node. Is self repair because it is possible that uh, when a dead node occurs, it will find another 
another path. And like Tom mentioned, it is a fraction of the price for the cost because it is uh, the, the cost of the connection of the gateway divided by the number of nodes on this gateway. And if you get to the, the other slide, then you will see that on WirePass especially, what is happening is that we have a high density of nodes that can be connected on the gateway. So we are dividing the cost of connection uh, uh, significantly. And also uh, the, uh, the implementation of WirePass is efficient because it reduced the, co the collision uh, based on the protocol use, the, the channel management, and the time management uh, that is implemented by the protocol. It is highly re reliable and it is possible that the, 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 uh, the, the service provided by the protocol will self-heal the, the network and it will also decentralize the network architecture allowing a gateway to uh, take charge of more nodes at a specific location and multiple gateway are supported. So this means that if a gateway fail, then it can uh, be, uh, it will switch from one to another automatically. The security and the encryption as for example, and the, the, the packet management, the uh, encapsulation is managed by the protocol. It was warranting that we have a safe implementation. So these are the, the, the uh, the key things about WirePass, but what is really killer is the fact that if you update a city with a uh, with a new firmware because there is a security patch, it is import important to have a software upgrade that works easily with a large number of nodes where it becomes really difficult, as for example, with LoRa and Sigfox when you have a larger or dense uh, density is important. The bandwidth is really good also with uh, with WirePass. So it's going really uh, quite fast. So there is not, not traffic jam over the network and the latency is also good on the, over the network. So uh, and when you are trying to have a light that needs to come out on or you want to get a metering value right now, you, you don't have to wait for the, uh, the, the platforms to get back with the information later on. And also there is no protocol limitation. So the number of response in a period can be, uh, uh, is, is managed by the application. So you don't have to wait or you, there's not a, a certain amount of a communication per hour. So this is allowing us, for example, the software update that is going uh, fairly easy. So now I think uh, I switch back to, uh, to Tom again. So Thank you, Eric. So what I'd like to do now is, is just go through um, a real-time demo and talk briefly before we go to that page about one of the components we talked about is the gateway. Um, you're going to find there's going to be three typical scenarios when, when there's gateways deployed in what you'd consider a smart city uh, SCMS platform. There's going to be the low quantity of nodes that's on a gateway. Uh, there's going to be a strong quality of nodes, and there's going to be an extremely large quantity of nodes on a gateway. If you have a low quality uh, quantity, you have limitations. Uh, where we had a project, we went up against a competitor and they can only put 100 nodes on a gateway. Uh, we generally specify 700 to 1,000. Uh, the other end of it is when you have uh, an extremely high amount of nodes you know, in the several thousands on there. And what happens when you get in that category is you lose uh, redundancy. You lose the ability to, to manage it from a security standpoint. So the quantity of nodes we've, we've put in um, to the gateway ratio really helps when a city or utility is trying to maximize the use of an SCMS. And when they do that, um, we help them define what a smart city is by what the city needs, not by what the limitations of one manufacturer could be through a product offering. Uh, we encourage uh, other manufacturers and sensors to come on board on, on this SCMS. So it really does help the end user really create what's uh, a true uh, smart city defined by the city. And while we do that, uh, it, it allows the end user a single point to manage assets. And it's just more, it's more than just electrical assets too, which we'll go through. Um, and it helps them track the return on their investment. And, and one of the best features through the Dimonoff, plat Dimonoff platform is the commissioning. Several systems uh, competitors of ours, they will require third party integrators to do commissioning. Um, the Dimonoff system is, is very intuitive. 
uh, and with a limited amount of, of training, you can add sensors, you can make adjustments, you can um, allocate privileges, and do all of this with mouse, mouse clicks internally. So it really does create a strong intuitive system that is going to be managed by a limited number of folks, um, and it helps the city define who those folks are and truly get a smart city platform going. So the screen you see up right now is going to be typical of uh, the SCMS platform. Uh, you're gonna see several icons on there, and those icons are repre representation of, uh, looks like we have uh, cameras, um, some street lights, and uh, snow sensors, and a few other sensors. So what we can do is, um, Jean-Luc, if you wouldn't mind clicking on one of the camera sensors, If you have an event and something were to happen, and uh, let's say you get an alert here, and there's a, a, an excessive amount of snow, or a light pole went down, or um, something else happened, another sensor was tripped. Uh, in this particular case, uh, you would be able to click on that icon and pull the latest image. There's also other uh, camera features we have where it'll go to where it shows uh, real-time video, but this will allow you to, to say, okay, I've got an alert here, something's going on. Um, let me take a look and see what, what is happening there. Um, and it, it, it just gives a single point of, of management for multiple assets. Now, I did say that earlier on that you could manage things other than electrical assets. And that's true. If you want to manage how many uh, sewer caps you have, uh, we can create an icon, or better yet, you guys, uh, the end user, can re create an icon and drop those right on the map. That gives you a, a geospatial reference on where uh, your items would be. So he's uh, what Jean-Luc is doing now is he's looking through some of the different layers. And if you want to add icons, it's as simple as this. You'd pull down a, a menu. Um, there's a host of sensors that are there. Uh, and if we need to add something, we can. Um, we can also uh, manage digital signage. Um, there's a whole multitude of sensors that, that can be added. And this is how you would typically add them. Um, you would go through a screen, a series of screens like this. You would uh, create your um, your scenarios and then your parameters, and then you submit it. And then when you refresh, it's now live on the system. So that that bluish gray zone, how it looks like it's highlighted, that is a zone. Uh, zones can uh, be defined by the end user. Uh, they can be done with mouse clicks where you would drag over an entire region and create that zone. Um, they can also be done by uh, gateways and how many nodes are in a specific gateway. Whatever the city is looking to do, we could um, design these zones uh, so they can better manage uh, the city from, from, again, from one platform. So we have some samples of, of cities that we have done. And um, we're going to go through the, the series of them from, from size. And um, and then what we could do is um, uh, we'll go through, take a look at the size and some of the nuances. And then towards the end of that, I'll, I'll rope uh, Bernard in on here, uh, who is the CEO of the company. He can uh, take a little bit further and do a little deeper dive. So, uh, Luke, if you go to Mr. Shagas, I'll start there. Okay, so there's typical of what you'd see. There's fixtures and gateways uh, in, a, in a series of, of different states. And um, that is what you would see in a typical um, scenario in a zone for what you're monitoring. I like if you want alarms, everything's operating fine. The poles. You want to get rid of the poles layer. Yeah. I could turn, I'll turn this over to Bernard Tattoo. He was on right there and he could um, add something uh, to this as well. Bernard? Sure. Well, <clears throat> uh, Jean-Luc, if you can just go on the uh, the layers, top right, and get rid of the poles. So this is a good example of um, the type of the various assets that the city is managing. So uh, you'll say, well, poles don't communicate. You're exactly right. 
uh, the Dimonoff CMS is actually more than just a communicating assets uh, platform, but you, you literally define your layers as jean was showing in the administration. Basically, you use the platform not only to communicate to the gateways, and the gateways will communicate to the, uh, the nodes, but if you go in administration, jean -Dic, and basically you def you define yourself your layers so what we've built is a toolbox to do just that and uh if you go to luminaire please luminaire okay and uh you you basically define your various functional layers so we have uh you know street lights uh to which you assign icons and colors and uh, determine if they're network or not if they if you're going to use scenarios and groups and so on but you also define uh the way you're going to color them in order to bring significance to the information that you're receiving on their status on their uh, the way they basically report back the uh, the metering functionalities. Uh, so real time, you will get the health status of each one of these nodes, and that will mean different things. So low power factors or uh, over voltages and so on. Uh, once again, in administration, Jalik, uh, then parameter management, the game, as you may have uh, understood, <laughs> if you've been trying to manage IoT projects uh, and give it a little bit of a future proofing, just uh, yeah, stick uh, up there. Um, okay, the the game basically is uh, to, uh, as Eric was mentioning, we started with street lighting. Uh, in mind, but we wanted to develop something that was a lot more generic. And we love that term generic because we want the platform to allow you to adapt it to various type of applications from now. So defining uh, your layers, that's one step, but then how do you talk to those various sensors? And there's many, many protocols and one of the points that is uh, you know well written about is the way we lack standardizations of protocols out there so uh, this is one topic that we wanted to tackle with SCMS which is to basically define the way we talk to those uh, connected devices uh, for example, if you define uh, the, um, you know, after, uh, whatever, après panne, so uh, what happens after a failure? Well, we define the fields and they apply to those functional layers, uh, streetlight luminaires and parks and so on. And this is the, the type of message that will be communicated from the device. And uh, we'll cover the APIs a little later. But that is the second step that we've taken to uh, really open up the API so we can communicate with, uh, we actually have an example here, which is the entire island of Montreal. So it covers actually more than, um, uh, okay, jean luc is logging in. So it, it covers the entirety of, if we go in the Montreal now, for example, Oops, you're a little fast, um, So that's the entirety. Uh, uh, that's Marianne now. That's okay. That's the entirety. Okay. So in this project, we're going to be connecting uh, somewhere around 133,000 fixtures. Uh, as you can see, um, your the the little black dots and red dots are um, the gateways. And when you zoom in uh, individuals, so if you go uh, up there in the area of zero six something, um, it's uh, Montreal Nord, then uh, just very quickly, the, the, the dots that you see are actually statistical uh, results that you get uh, when you hover over uh, an area. This will give you statistics on you know, you have a 1,390 uh, nodes connected to that gateway. Five of them are still lit. Uh, there 
there is um, some of them, actually most of them are on contactors, which means that uh, uh, at the sunset, uh, they the, just shut down everything. So the project is not finished because we still have to do the uh, decorative lighting. So uh, they couldn't just, you know, leave everything on during the day um, for the, the, the decorative lighting. So they, they're they still using the contactors, but we get to know that because the, the nodes actually report back on um, uh, power power outage, if you if you like. So uh, this is a very good example of the, the type of density that you get uh, from those networks. So um, Ben was mentioning <laughs> that they, they ramped it up to uh, uh, 700,000. And uh, trust me, I have measured this myself because I sat across a table in Helsinki facing the guy who manages this uh, this network, and he is for real. Um, so uh, this is a you know very good example of the dashboard you can create, and and then uh, you have a personalized button where um, I, I talked about making the platform very very generic. Um, there will never be enough reports. So you can actually personalize your report so if you just want to click on it for a second. Uh, and then you define uh, requête personnalisée, the second right one, no, top, a little further up. Okay, this one. And uh, and you create your own. So just go edit on, uh, whoop, okay, there you go. So so basically you, um, oh, this one is, this is uh, slower. Okay, so this one is even uh, at a higher level because you, you can literally write your own SQL script. But if you want to make you know uh, your life easier, you can just go with the uh, the the uh, using the the fields that uh, uh, no uh, another one. Trying to just shut this down and edit the second no 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 no. Okay, second button on the on the left, this one. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you you basically use the fields uh, that are already existing, and you create whatever kind of query you want. Um, so that the platform was built to have all this intelligence for you, and uh, basically uh, becomes a great big toolbox to create your smart city environment. Okay. Um, can you you go to um, because I, I like this application Showin again. Uh, that's correct. And if you go to Path to Gateway, um, Ben and Eric and Tom were talking about uh, the meshing. And if you see that little blue line, this is the type of behavior. Yeah, just uh, stick to okay. This is gorgeous. Um, this is the kind of behavior that happens in the field where you see the connectivity from one pole to not necessarily the next neighbor, but you know it could be as, as far as a kilometer away, and then they just relay the messages. So you can build very extensive zones. If you unclick the path to gateway and go to satellite, uh, you'll notice that this is not a small region. It's actually a you know very big area. And if you unzoom on this whole territory, it I think it covers something like 25 kilometer uh, uh, wide uh, with uh, something like uh, 10 gateways or or 16 minus a few. So uh, so yeah, that's so uh, the, when building a uh, um, a smart city environment, this you know this is the main thing we wanted to uh, to, to to press as a message. Uh, things will evolve in the next years. We may not know what kind of sensor you will want to use. This city, for example, is using uh, top right. And, uh, uh, over and above street lighting, they're using sewer level uh, detectors, for example. So if you click there, there you go. 
then you see that uh, they're right next to a river. They need to have monitoring of certain areas in that city. And by the way, the, the fun thing is that they're actually using the exact same network that is sitting 30 feet up in the air uh, on streetlights. And basically, it extends the, the network to be applied to uh, more than just street lighting, but any other kind of sensors. Good. Tom, I'll hand it back to you. All right, great. Thanks, Bernard. So we'll show you a couple of the uh, cities, and there's one unique um, project we have on the back end, and this is uh, Mississauga. Uh, it's southwest of Toronto, has a population of about 730,000 people, and it's about 111 uh, square miles. And this was one of the first uh, larger scale projects uh, that, that Demonoff rolled out. And what you're seeing there, I believe, is one of the original um, SCMS uh, dashboards that we had, and it's changed a little bit, and you'll see on the next one. but this particular project has about 50,000 streetlights there, and um, they really started to use this for basic streetlight applications. They wanted to monitor, they wanted to meter, they wanted to do maintenance on it, and it is starting to evolve more into smarter sensors and utilizing it for more of an in-depth view of what's going on in the city. The, the next project is Montreal, and Montreal is unique for, for many different reasons. Um, Montreal is, is a very large um, Canadian uh, city. It's actually the largest, uh, um, most populous city in the, the, the province of Quebec. This uh, is about 166 square miles, so it's very large. Uh, they had a little bit of a hybrid going on with a control platform there. They had some GE nodes and some telematics nodes, and they really wanted to streamline and make this a little bit more easy to manage. So. Uh, Demonoff went in and they were able to work with both GE and telematics to make some hardware changes and lo and behold there's uh, Demonoff, there's GE and there's telematic nodes um, in both Cobra head style and decorative fixtures throughout the entire city. So there's about 133,000 streetlights there and uh, by the time this project is all said and done and they have it totally done they're projecting about upwards of over 240,000 uh, sensors under control. Sensors are everything from streetlights to smart city IoT sensors, could be flood sensors, you know, it could be air quality sensors, sewer gas sensors, things like that, but they're projecting it's going to ramp out to over 240,000 um, items, devices, and it's all done from one platform, and it's just like what you see in front of you. This is obviously the 30,000 foot view of it, and then as you zoom in, you'll start to get to the nuts and bolts of what's going on in there. So you can see the progression. Uh, the cities are getting bigger. The amount of sensors that are going on are, are increasing. And uh, the end result is it's all done uh, from one platform, even while we add other manufacturers. So that brings us to one of the more unique projects. This is, um, this is gonna be an ESCO that's going to run uh, for a large portion of the province of Quebec. Um, there's over 1,200 cities in Quebec province total, give or take, and uh, they're starting now the, the, the management of many of those from one. I believe there's over slightly over 20 under one, um, one platform right now, which is obviously the Demonoff platform. So what, would, what you would have when you start to add these, and this is where we like to really, if we're going to a client and an end user and we're trying to sell this, we think of utilities, uh, we think of and it's, it's not just cities either. We think of you know a, a rail yards that have multiple locations, or we think of folks that have stores. This is a great example on how you can take all these locations and manage it under one house. So for this particular one, what would happen is when you pull up the dashboard, you're going to have a bunch of tabs uh, that run across and it says the name of the city. The, and the moment you click on the city that you want, you're going to be brought right back into the SCMS dashboard. So it's going to give you uh, the ability to really jump on any issues you have coming, if inclement weather's coming in or if there's um, power outages that are rolling through, you're going to have an accurate snapshot on what's going on with some causes and some, you can start to create your scenarios for solutions under this one particular uh, dashboard. 
And and that's the key to this is, you know, you can see what happened when we, we started to work with Montreal when there was different manufacturers in, solutions were made. So this really, this particular scenario is going to really ramp that up even further by allowing us to say, okay, what sensors do you need? What additional features do you, do we want to add to it? All of this comes from one location. And, and that's really, if I had to, if I had to impress one thing is that that's really the, the meat and the, you know, the, what really brings this, this platform to the forefront is the ability to do that, to add features, to make adjustments. Um, you can see the steps we've taken from Mississauga to Montreal to now Quebec province. Uh, that is really the, the, I would say, one of the biggest components is we can just keep adding to it and control from one location. Um, so I'm going to turn this back over to Bernard, and I would like to add to, if anybody has any questions, there is a question tab on the right side of your GoToWebinar, uh, and then uh, we can get to those. Uh, we can also open it up for whatever time we have left at the end to answer some questions. So Bernard? Yeah, I'll just uh, pick up on uh, what you just mentioned on the... Uh, uh, the application for uh, the Federation of Municipalities. And I'll, I'll paint that picture um, in the market. Uh, we would obviously love to, you know, target all very, very large cities, but th that's not the reality where the population lives. And uh, we realized a few years ago that there are uh, thousands of small cities that typically We'll probably not even have a full-time mayor and definitely no uh, IT department. Uh, cannot they access the exact same level of technology that the large cities like whatever, Chicago, for example, uh, would have? The answer is yes, and this is what we wanted to create. In order to, to create that platform, we needed to have uh, the replication of, uh, you know, users sandbox. So uh, some users, uh, I don't know if you can uh, go there, Jean-Luc, um, in the FQM site. Um, we, as you will notice, we, we're never shy of showing up the, uh, there we go, can we? So yeah. Um, uh, let's go back to the security. Beautiful. So you define the users. Uh, there's a user tab there, up there. User. That's good. And you, you know, as you can see, there's a there's a bunch of uh, different users with various roles, and some users will actually uh, only be allocated to specific, uh, what we call them business units, like uh, uh, Saint Augustine is, is a business unit, but it really has five larger zones. And you can allocate uh, some users to specifically just some zones, or uh, even uh, some uh, uh, groups of lights, or uh, functional layers, so some people will only be able to do things on the streetlights or park lighting or, or so on, and users can be limited to, uh, um, uh, yeah, on the user tabs uh, up there. Uh, uh, there, you know, users can be limited to accessible dates, so date ranges and days of weeks and time of day, and, um, when when you build a very scalable platform that will actually be uh, addressing hundreds of users, you need those functionalities, same as, for example, uh, the ability to manage uh, maintenance. It uh, doesn't seem that this user has access to the uh, maintenance management tab, but uh, we also have equipped SCMS with a maintenance management um, module uh, that will take the, the alarms and the health status of things that are not working well. Uh, you can automatically allocate work orders and tickets and descriptions and uh, basically better plan for maintenance routines. So that really was the, uh, I will still use the, the term generic, um, basically give uh, the ability to all users to uh, practice their job 
uh, as um, you know efficiently as possible. I think we can go back to the presentation. Okay, thank you. So, as we've mentioned, uh, yes, we did focus on uh, other things than lighting, realizing that uh, once, can, can you just step on to the next one? Um, you know, we've realized that we were sitting on top of every street light 30 feet up in the air with, a, you know, creating a beautiful network of telecommunication. As uh, Tom mentioned, actually, almost uh, free of cost, uh, the only cost being applied to uh, the gateways where, you know, if necessary, uh, you can use cellular uh, with a cost, but then the rest is basically free. So um, we looked at various other applications and uh, environmental sensing uh, was one of the, the uh, you know, most pressing topic. Um, but again, we wanted to create something that was generic enough. So not necessarily dedicated devices, but very generic devices, which we like to call it um, edge intelligence, uh, capable of measuring various types of sensors, so pressure, temperature, humidity, uh, VOCs, uh, gases, uh, and, but that typically translates into, you know, small voltages. Um, is it possible to uh, bring the intelligence at the edge where you're going to do the translation of that signal into something significant? You know, this means 115 PSI or, you know, this level of PPM. So, um, we believe it's the future. You don't necessarily have to send tons of data. Nowadays, you can build very smart edge devices that gather all this data, process all this data at the edge, and simply send you, when it's time, based on rules, the uh, meaningful piece of data. Next. Then. Um, obviously, it, it, it is important to find applications that uh, have a clear uh, payback story. And if you look at smart, well, what we're trying to do on the grand theme of urban tech, uh, because we're starting not to like the terminology smart city because it means anything to a lot of people, um, we, we're starting to use the terminology urban tech. Um, parking is definitely one of the things that we have to solve uh, in in all the you know the situations that uh, the cities are facing. Why? Because um, there are, obviously the pandemic has changed a few things. But we're still going to be moving around and we're still going to be searching for parking space in the morning and coming out of parking spaces at night. And if you, uh, especially in the morning, look at uh, the, the, the behavior of the traffic in a city, the pe those people looking for a parking space actually are uh, at the core of the creation of the, the, the part the, the uh, the traffic phenomenon. You slow down, therefore, uh, you know, 25 cars behind you, they're stopped. Um, can we actually accelerate the entrance to the parking? Uh, bring uh, smart devices at the edge that will actually do license plate recognition and basically you don't necessarily have to spend too much time, you save whatever, 15 or 20 seconds for every car, and it, it, you, you increase the, tra the traffic flow. Inside the parking lot, you have uh, parking space recognition. Um, uh, you um, uh, basically uh, improve the, um, the, 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 the occupancy 
of uh, your parking spaces. You also bring uh, next one, um, next one, John Dick uh, or Tom. Okay. Um, the uh, so as you can see, uh, if you get to know with real accuracy the occupancy of your parking spaces, then you can feed um, uh, basically um, informational panels uh, to accelerate the flow so people reach their destination in uh, the parking decks uh, much faster. All of this basically uh, improves the customer experience, but improve revenue improve uh, the, the the traffic flow and we're solving a very important problem uh, in the area of parking. Then um, still talking about the uh, the applications of IOT for meaningful things. Um, there's this topic of tracking objects, tracking packages, tracking production, uh, uh, tracking the cold chain. And all of this becomes very much feasible uh, because the network exists and because the ecosystem. So Ben was talking about the ecosystem of partners. Um, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. And some of those partners make very smart little devices. And they're all compatible with uh, the Wirepass standard. Um, and uh, it actually creates a, a very sturdy um, uh, network of things um, that you can use for many different things. Yet again, it all has to tie back to uh, a platform that is generic enough to accept uh, various type of sensors that you define, etc. So you, you're starting to get the feeling of how important it is to actually design uh, an environment where you go from A to Z. And I think we were very lucky to actually meet each other and uh, and build uh, with trust in each other uh, a very good uh, ecosystem. So, uh, yes, Eric, I'll pass it on to you. Um, in the past year, uh, we've determined that one of the uh, important avenue was to uh, piggyback with some of those people having great ideas, but no means to develop uh, those new products. So Eric, I'll let you present Amatus. Yeah, Amatus uh, means uh, remotely in uh, Latin language. So, uh, in fact, we created Amotus and it's now a part of the Demona family. It's a design house, especially to design IoT devices. If you get to the other, uh, to the next slide. So, we are specialized into different wireless technology, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, XB, LoRa, and especially WirePass. But it's the point is to get the right technology for the right application. And we are uh, developing and giving the service to other companies to uh, uh, add sensors or to develop new ones or to develop new solutions that can be added to our uh, uh, cloud platform, to our gateways, or, uh, and uh, so we can we write firmwares, we develop electronics, and also uh, multiple uh, platform software. So most of, of our products or the products we develop are sensors that talks with routers that get back to uh, that come up to the cloud. And uh, if there are transactions where uh, we have to change propriety of uh, assets, it can use blockchain. And we have a dashboard that allows uh, to visualize what is happening with the sensors. But these can also be seen through the mobile app. And it's a single development that runs on the same uh, the rain, the same software on several platforms. And we also have AI that can provide some metrics and give some more information on, or value to the information to the user that are monitoring devices. Next slide. So uh, to sum it up, uh, I think it's uh, Bernard that uh, takes this last one. 
Am I right? Yes, sorry, I, <laughs> I had to unmute. So uh, I think we, I hope that we've, um, we've brought you some valuable information. Um, and the reason why we call this presentation an all-in-one smart city system is that uh, we wanted to raise attention on uh, the various needs when looking into a, an IoT platform for possibly any type of application, smart city being the, you know, the the the, the big uh, projects, but you know, the, we we also see smaller projects, but uh, being capable of managing several layers, and by the way, letting the user take care of it. Um, defining edge devices or uh, handling various networks uh, or even bringing uh, business intelligence into those edge devices. Um, how this environment should uh, manage is issues of uh, compatibility between, um, um, I would call, various manufacturers. Um, Montreal is a good example of how um, you know, you, you may want to buy your products from various um, manufacturers. Well, the platform has to be flexible enough to uh, to uh, adapt to those uh, foreign uh, manufacturers and, and speak to those products. Um, uh, the 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 ability to run what I've called business business layers. Um, Basically, uh, we don't know what the future will present to us. Uh, the ability to build the, the the filtering rules of the type of packets you that you're going to receive. So you don't want your uh, you, you know an additional type of sensor uh, to to actually break your platform. Uh, also to um, to apply. Um, rules per per as I presented per user per business units per um, uh, you know day of week and so on so real life applications um, and and obviously uh, have the ability to leverage the best technology I hope we've given you the uh, the uh, very crisp clear idea of what uh, the wire pass differentiators are. Um, all in all, uh, and you see it at the bottom of the screen, um, it is extremely important to to come to this market with a, you know an openness for third-party devices, support multiple RF protocols. Uh, you know we've mentioned others, and there are applications where uh, LoRa will have its application. Um, and then, obviously, third-party networks and third parties APIs. So we hope you've uh, enjoyed this presentation. And, Jalik, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you uh, very much, Bernard. Um, um, so thank you very much for listening in. Um, hopefully we've answered all the questions in the chat room. Um, I know that uh, Tom was answering some, some questions. Um, I just want to finish off by saying thank you to everyone. We will have this webinar um, shared with the participants uh, through the Wirepass uh, activities. And thank you to the uh, four um, uh, presenters today. So uh, Ben Corrado from Wirepass, thank you very much um, for hosting us um, in within your webinar series. Uh, Bernard Tetu, CEO, thank you. Um, Eric Dussablon, um, VP Operations at Demonoff, thank you. Tom um, at, uh, yeah. at uh, Trinity Services, thank you very much. And all the participants, we thank you uh, and wish you a, a great end of day. Uh, and thank you for listening in these uh, Dimonoff Wirepass webinar series. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, everyone who attended.